and now the women's 5K is off. And before we go through the names really quickly, Morgan, I do just want to say thank you. I know that you have to run. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm going to go out in there and support my teammates. Yeah, all right. Well, we hope to see you back soon. Heal up that ankle. Now, in the women's... Keep the YouTube uh, videos coming. They're gold. The women's 5K, we have a great race on hand. And it's presented by Run Gooder. Humble brag by them. They're a two-time Runner's World Gear right. of the Year winning brand. Quick disclaimer, they can't make any guarantees that you're going to get faster, but they will promise you that you're going to look gooder. No slip, no bounce while running. Some of my favorite pair of sunglasses. So the, the race is sponsored by Run Gooder. They're giving you guys a stellar deal. And the promo code is just apt for this occasion. It's use code TEXASHEAT to get any two of their polarized award-winning OG sunglasses for just 20 bucks. That's Texas Heat if you visit run uh, if you visit gooder.com. All right, real quick to run through the names. Erica Kemp, Rachel Schneider, Weenie Kalati, Sharon Lokiti, Josette Norris, Emily Lapari, Julie Ann Sali, Maggie Montoya, Emma Coburn, Laura Galvin, Eleanor Purrier, Eleanor Fulton, and Ali Cash. The Olympic trials qualifying time is 1520. The Olympic standard is 1510. Now again, We've been billing this as the rematch from the Ocean Breeze two mile where we saw El Perrier break the America, Jenny Simpson's American record, but Emma Coburn also got under that previous mark. So the two of them, really strong running. This is a rematch. Let's see how they do in a 5K for Emma. This is her first 5K. She's an eight time steeplechase national champion. She's run 403 for 1500, 423 for the mile, 902 for the steeplechase, but she's never run an outdoor 5K. So let's see what she's got in store. El Perrier, she's run 1458 at the World Championships in Doha. That's where her PR is from. And she was third, in order to get there, she was third at the 2019 uh, US Championships. So she's got experience making teams, and now they're right up in the front. And we do have two separate pace lights on the track. I think that we are going to see uh, an assault on sub-15, hopefully by Ellie Purrier, and I know Emma Coburn was also planning on going quick with her. And uh, then there is a second group that is thinking more about that Olympic trials qualifying time. The Olympic standard was 15.10, that's 72.8 per lap. So if you think about it, we're going to be seeing some sub 72s here along the way. And they were in Oof. very, very good hands up front with two team boss gals leading the way. That's Maddie Am and Corey, Corey McGee, uh, both doubling back this race to help out. Sarah Vaughn right behind them. So they, they've brought in plenty of athletes to help bring this pace along. Ellie Purrier is in fourth place. We're going to keep an eye on her as they come through 1K in 2.59. I believe that's, is that Emily Lapari in between the, the two of them? Emily Lapari, the former Long Island Mile champion, is... The pride of Roslyn. Yes, one step ahead of Emma Coburn. And behind her, Rachel Schneider and then Weenie Kalati. Wayne Kalati, very, very inspiring story. Uh, she was a guest on the City Smack podcast back in December. Uh, I would go and check out that, that episode, uh, plug in my own podcast on the broadcast, of course. Uh, but she competed for Eritrea at the 2014 uh, World Junior Championships, decided not to get back on the plane back home, chasing the American dream, stayed here, went through the high school system out in Virginia, went to uh, New Mexico, was a two-time NCAA champion, racked up a bunch of all American honors, and now has dreams of competing for the United States. She's in the process of trying to work that citizenship out before the 2021 US Olympic trials. So uh, it's just kind of a wait and see game for her, but she's up there in the mix, had a great performance at the Sound Running Track meet last, last December. They are fully strung out, which is what you would expect at a hot pace like this. As they approach nine laps to go, they still have the two rabbits, Maddie and Corey, and I guess Sarah is also a third rabbit. So all hands on deck. These girls are in good hands. Chris, is there anyone that you have your eyes on as a potential upset tonight? I would say Rachel Snyder would probably be the upset because she just, you know, came off that massive payday at Camel City yeah. where she won the mile and the 3K within, you know, I guess it was like an hour or so, netted $12,000 worth of prize money. Yeah, you know, Chris, that's actually something I want to talk to uh, a little bit about as we come through the mile in 450. So, um, you know, 72 is exactly what we're more or less looking for. 
Chris, an interesting aspect of these early season races is prize money. You know, in the men's 1500, we did have $750 in the, both the men's and women's side, thanks to the Beer Mile podcast. But a lot of these early season races do not have prize money. For a lot of these athletes, this part of the season is about running fast and not necessarily about making money. Now, within their contracts, there would be various time bonuses. Right. Oftentimes, you would get time bonuses for things like the Olympic trials qualifying time, the Olympic standard maybe sub-15 American records. But at this point in the year, it's a little bit different. I think might be surprising for a lot of fans watching at home to know that they're actually probably operating at a net loss, the majority of these athletes, and paying for their flights and coming here for many contracts would have that support for travel built in. But for those athletes that don't necessarily have a contract, they're not even here to run to make money. They're here to run because they believe in their ability to get the most out of themselves on a night like tonight. Right, and, and not necessarily hitting, you know, Olympic standards or, or, or Olympic trials standards, but, you know, we've been seeing it in the last few days. We, a lot of people are coming away from this meet with some nice, you know, PRs and, and little chunks. So Rachel Schneider has the Olympic standard in, I believe, the 1500, the 5K, and the 10K. We saw her 10K debut earlier in the year. Yeah, she won the 10K at the track meet in 31.09. Uh, she ran... 4.11.73 for the 1,500 meters indoors last year before things shut down. But, uh, yeah, I mean, her PR is 4.30 uh, for the mile and, and 8.57 for the 3K. Uh, so she's got speed. I mean, she might have some of the best range on the U.S. women's uh, distance running scene. Yeah, and, you know, I think Rachel had a very successful career at Georgetown, but she's an athlete when she turned professional, now running for Under Armour, has just gotten better and better. And I've heard some of the workouts that she does up in Flagstaff. Come on, you can't just tell that. you got to give us a little details. What can you spill? Give us a little bit. I can say that the general theme is that she does an incredible amount of volume on <laughs> many workouts, often a.m. and p.m. It's something that I think uh, has become a very popular thing for many athletes to do is to really load up on single days of training. You train hard and then you recover harder. And uh, Rachel's been known to do some really incredible AM PM doubles in the hills of Flagstaff. And that's, you know, we, we said it yesterday. I'll say it again. Fitness is fitness. And her ability to run a 1500 translates apparently to her ability to run a 10K. And I'm confident in the 5K as well. Now up in front after the Pacers have dropped, it is now El Perrier. So she ran 9, 10, 28 for the two mile American record. And along the way, clock a 3K PR of 8.36. In the weird year that was last year, she ran 202 for the 800, four flat for a 1500 and a little low key time trial out in Wellesley, Massachusetts. And the year before that was really, really when it, it kind of, I remember that's when you started to hear the whispers of like, stop sleeping on L. She was third at the US Championships, nearly matched her PR in the 5K semis at Worlds, came back three days later, and she ran 14.58, which was, 14.58 gets you 11th at the 2019 World Championships because 13 women broke 15, and it took 14.29 to medal. So after her American record, Ellie ran 9.10, I believe, in the yeah. two mile at uh, two weeks ago at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. Everyone's eyeing her. The, the pressure is on her to be the one to push the pace. We know that she's fit, and others are kind of trying to ride those coattails to their own personal best tonight. And she's a, a very fascinating story because she's from a very remote town in northern Vermont, just miles from farm country, and it's like uh, and she's big into milk. Her family's in the milk industry. Her, uh, her husband, I, I, the sheds she posts on. She's got Instagram. a great Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, really good follow. And so, you know, she then went and competed at the University of New Hampshire, uh, another smaller school. And you know, when you're competing in both high school and college for smaller teams, you're not necessarily exposed to the same level of day in and day out competition that some of these athletes like Emma Coburn may have faced at Colorado with the likes of Jenny Simpson at yeah. practice. And so, you know, for those of us who watch Ellie, especially later in her career, I, I remember watching her at the indoor national meet, I believe her senior year, and you see this bib from New UNH. Yeah. And I think for those of us who are paying attention, you really think, wow, there's so much potential there and she's delivering on it. Now, the other thing about 
El Perrier is, you know, kind of like we, we, we've talked a little bit about, and we've, you know, there was the article on Lunch Trend not too long ago about seeing the top, the top stars go head to head, like the uh, like Donovan Brazier and Bryce Hopple. You know, one matchup I really want to see go head to head is Shelby Houlihan versus El Perrier soon. I have a feeling that's going to happen soon enough. There, you know, uh, I think that the two best, uh, both very strong, both 1500 and 5K runners. We were talking earlier about those. The, the, the changes that happen at the Olympic trials, because those were two athletes that we thought were maybe going to potentially double. And now it just got a lot more difficult with that double. And, you know, maybe things are, are trying to change. I'm sure their coaches are petitioning to have things mix up a little bit. But um, the best of the sport going against each other is obviously exciting for everyone. As we approach one mile to go 10.30, 10.31, Chris, I didn't think that they were going to be this bunched up. Do you think they were maybe put off by the weather? Yeah, I mean, I, that could definitely be it, where they, they hit the brakes a little bit. But I think we're starting to see a little bit of a move here. That That's is, Josette Norris, wow. the, the former Hoya, now training with the Reebok Boston Track Club down in Charlottesville, Virginia. So another former Hoya in the mix. We were talking about uh, Rachel Schneider earlier, Josette Norris. She's run 431 for the mile twice so far this indoor season. Her Recent PR is, is 1529 from the Sunset Tour in 2019. Recently engaged to a name that many may know, Robbie Andrews. And the thing that I heard in my conversation with Robbie earlier this week is that she's fit. She's ready to go. She started to showcase a little bit of it at, at the uh, at the meet out in Winston-Salem at Campbell City Invitational. So she's, she's throwing herself in the mix here. I think for an athlete like her to really be showing a fearlessness coming up on the shoulder of Ellie passing Emma Coburn you know that that shows that she has that confidence she's doing something in workouts that is telling her she's ready to reach that next level and she's not going to just wait for someone else to do the work as they hit three laps to go in 1142. Listen as a Marquette alum I might also be pulling for the Big East over here where we've got Georgetown in the mix we've got Villanova with Emily Lapari as well some of my favorite memories are watching uh, Emily Lapari you know kick to kick and win those those big wheels at, at uh, the Penn Relays. Also a name that we have not mentioned is Sharon Lucchetti out of Dark Sky, the former Kansas Jayhawk. She 2018 is NCAA 10K champion. A, uh, the, the daily training partner with Kaladi. And so, you know, when that person next to you that you're doing every single work with, you're in sync, step in every single workout. And if they're doing it, then you know that you're capable of doing it too. And there's a level of comfort that comes from being next to that familiar body. This is a little bit surprising here by Josette Norris. You know, she, unlike some of the other athletes in the field, I do believe Josette needs the time still. And yeah. so she's taking the responsibility. She's not going to let someone else take control of her own destiny here. As we spoke about earlier, it's not about winning it tonight. Although, you know, personally, that's what I'm invested in. But for these athletes, it's about getting those times as she hits 800 meters to go in about 12.53. Right. So her PR again, 15.29 from... Uh, 2019 and the OTQ mark is 1520. So still in reach, but she is going to have to start going. You can't sit around and uh, lollygag much longer. And she is seeing those lights not too far ahead of her. It's fully in reach. If I'm her, I'm ignoring the fact that Ellie is behind her. It's not about that. We just surpassed 11.3K on the stream. Let's keep this go and share that link. Tell people, hey, you're not going to want to miss this last lap. Speaking of sharing, we now have Ellie Perrier <laughs> taking the lead with Good 600 transition. meters to go, something that I'm sure Josette is very happy to have. That's a back that she can stare at, take her to the promised land. Winnie Kaladi, hot on the the tail as well. Rachel Schneider's there. So there's plenty of racing here. At this point, you forget about the clock. You forget about the light. And you just think about beating the person next to you. Everyone in this front group has spent some time training in Flagstaff in the, in the last couple months. So, With one lap to go, that's 14.05 for Ellie Purrier. About 10 meters, 5, 10 meters back is Weenie Kaladi looking very, very strong. It seems as if, you know, unless something happens, that this whole front group is looking at uh, Olympic trials qualifying time of 15 20. It will take a very, very strong close. And Weenie is, is moving. Weenie looks good, but Ellie Perrier up front is controlling the race. 
You can see the, the coaches and agents on the infield yelling at their athletes, trying to get everything left out of them with 200 meters to go. It's 14.38. Kaladi, 14.40, just two steps behind. Gisette, 43. So they're all looking good for the Olympic trials qualifying time, but it's how far under can you get? Ellie Perrier is fully winding up the pace. She looks so, so comfortable. She's looking nowhere but in front of her. She's quickly rising to the occasion the knees are bursting through arms all arms 1504 with just a few meters left she's within reach of that olympic standard and she gets it 1508 so not necessarily the time that maybe we set out for at the beginning of the week but given the conditions minor adjustments were made and still a very very strong final 400 showing that in my opinion she has a lot of international potential in the 5k We'll wait for the results to populate on the screen after we get a couple more women across the finish line. Emily Lopari charging right now. A little bit of a tough final 2K for her. If there's one thing we know about Emily is that she can bounce back very, very strong. And she was going for it tonight. She was fearless up front early in the race. Her year 15.08, Kaladi 15.10, uh, I believe that was. We're almost Texas, which is not no Norris 1519 holding on to get under that Olympic trials qualifying time. So your top three go under the OTQ mark. So for Jacette Norris, she goes, she lowers her PR from 1529 to 1519, right? So 10 seconds. I think as we look at these results, it's obvious that there is a lot of humidity in the air. And I think that you know, as Morgan was saying, you can kind of fake it for a 5K, but this, these 10Ks that we have coming up, it's going to be a major factor, I think, and is probably going to attribute to some adjustment in the pace early on, like we did see in the 5Ks. And I believe we just also just set a new world leading time in the outdoor 5K. Norris, 15, 19, Ellie, with a very successful winter season, you know, I think after that two mile it's difficult to know how you come off something like that. It didn't seem like she was running with the same aggression that we maybe were expecting. But uh, first off, the emotion after running a 9, 10, 2 mile. I'm sure uh, she didn't sleep much that next night. She was excited. And you don't necessarily know what the workouts look like. And, uh, you know, obviously she was able to finish up very, very strong here tonight. But at some point in the middle, she decided that it wasn't worth being the one to push the pace. Now, a couple of people might be wondering, oh, is she signing autographs right now? No, that's not autographs. That is the people at USADA doing their job. That's right, we got drug testing at this meet. You know, when you when you start to look at the start list and see like, oh, wow, uh, we got quite a bit of uh, really, really good runners all descending upon one place. Let's get a couple drug tests in. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, especially at races like this when people are going for personal bests and qualifying times and standards, it's important to dot your I's and cross your T's and make sure that everything is accounted for. And so uh, props to uh, the whole crew for making sure that USADA is here tonight, well aware of what's happening, and uh, make sure that all these times will be certified. And here's L just really pulling away. You can see Wayne and Kaladi in the distance. Also, high, she was she was closing really hard in the first uh, 200 of that last lap, and then, but Perrier just threw the hammer down. I'm sure Coach Mark Coogan is happy with that performance, and 